Welcome to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast, where it's all about real women, real stories, real inspiration. And now your host and creator of Moms Making Six Figures, Heidi Bartolotta. Well, welcome. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this with me. Um, I really appreciate you. Thank you for having me. This is fun. (laughs) I would love to, in this interview, really dive into your background and kind of the redirection that you took in life because you are a very successful, very successful, excuse me, real estate attorney, a position that honestly a lot of even attorneys would covet. And um, you went through a divorce and you went into more of an entrepreneurial business role. And I think that there's just a lot of life lessons that you could share with our podcast listeners. We have a lot of women that are younger and aspiring to six figures, some that would be more your counterparts where they're already at six figures, but maybe looking at making some changes in their lives. And I think you just have a lot of wisdom in so many areas. So will you kind of dive into initially your background and how you ended up as an attorney and then we'll kind of go down that road? Yeah, sure. Yeah, actually I went uh, I went to college and got my degree in communications. I thought I was going to be the next Jane Pauley, now Katie Couric, now <laughs> whoever your frame of reference is for me. Um, I worked in the entertainment industry and I saw how... Um, you know, you kind of really have anything other than your um, your brain to stand on. And my brain, I liked studying, so I went to law school to kind of see what I could turn that into. I ended up immediately out of law school getting an offer with a big firm, and that took me down the real estate path. I did not envision myself being a real estate attorney, but that was what was needed at the time. Late 80s, early 90s, it was, you know, kind of the slump, but then came became red hot, and I got went down that track. And then I became a mom and things change when you become a mom. And especially in the world of attorneys, it's, you know, a a full-time job is a 80 or 90 hour week job, especially if you want to be on partner track. Right. Well, you talk about that. I think many people don't understand billable hours unless they come from law or accounting, really. Right. Yeah. So billable hours as an attorney, I mean, that is what pays the bills. Even as a baby attorney, when you're getting work, um, someone else is handing you the work to do. You're not necessarily finding clients on your own. It's all about how many hours you can bill to make the firm money. Mm -hmm. And so you might, you know, most people work 40 hours. When you work 40 hours, you might bill 15 or 20 of them. So you really need to work more like 60 or 70 in order to bill a full 40 hour work week. Yeah. And when you're on a partner track, it's more what? It's 90. 90. Plus. Yeah, it's, yeah. And I knew once I, you know, I had my first child about two years into my practice and I was trying to keep all the balls in the air and it was challenging. I had the money to be able to pay a nanny, but didn't love not seeing my kid. Mm-hmm. And, um, actually went through a separation with my my husband who we ended up reconciling and working things out but I separated with a 2 month old and I was really on my own being a single mom for a year and I it was hard to keep all the balls in the air it really really was and I was lonely and I was um I was not loving my job mm. so um I continued to do it until I kind of found another way which was working you know after 5 years I left and went in house with the company where I could not bill hours. Mm -hmm. And I could work more, you know, a 40 hour work week. And that's hard to find. I mean, those jobs are very coveted. Yes. And especially for women. And I was mentored by amazing women at my law firm. And I was grateful for that. But what I saw was they all had help. They all had either no kids or they had husbands who were teachers or, Mm -hmm. you know, had very low stress jobs where they could kind of be the primary parent. I just didn't see in front of me anyone who was doing, you know, full-time lawyer, partner track, and also having kids and wasn't completely pulling their hair out all the time. Mm -hmm. So I knew I needed to build an alternate track. Mm -hmm. And that worked really well for me for about the next 25 years. I was able to kind of piece together in-house positions, ultimately had three more children and really needed to be part-time because it was really hard to do even 40 hours a week 
my now ex-husband was an attorney, very busy, and I knew I wanted to be there. I wanted to, my kids were very involved in theater. I really wanted to be there to take them to help, you know, participate in their lives, be part, part of their lives. And I was able to do that, which was rare. Right. So this is a question I ask all of my interviewees, and it would have been very early on for you. But do you remember when you achieved six figures and what that felt like? I, I had to look because I wasn't exactly sure. And it actually wasn't until about 10 years ago. And because I had switched from, you know, I'm, I was a lawyer in the late 80s. And it was, you know, to start at $60,000 was a big deal mm -hmm. back then. Mm -hmm. And as I worked towards partnership track and then went off track, mm -hmm. I, you know, I, my income suffered. But then once I was working, um, I ended up working a couple of part-time in-house jobs, piecing them together because there was so great of a need and I was I was needed and I wanted to be able to meet those needs. Mm -hmm. So I hit six figures really piecing two part-time jobs together. And both I, in real estate law. Both in real estate law. Interesting. Yeah, both in real estate law. And um, but I was working, you know, 40 plus hours because I was working, I was trying to meet two companies' needs. Mm -hmm. And I was, you know, going back and forth. And that I knew wasn't sustainable. Yeah. Which is when I ended up, you know, meeting Angie and finding, you know, out about alternative routes, being an entrepreneur, which was something I had never in a million years thought I would do. Isn't that interesting? Right. I think and listening to your story and so many women's stories, I feel like especially um, when I was younger and I think maybe a lot of women are this way, you almost feel like you're going to have this track that's like, did, 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 did. and for most of us, it's like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> and then this big boulder pops up. Right. And then, and then this amazing blessing of children that you have this, you have no idea what children are going to do to your life until they arrive. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> to you emotionally and your time yep. and just all of it. But I think one of the things that you could really speak to is you have amazing kids. You've been an amazing mother and you. yet you have maintained some really high powered careers, honestly, in that. And you just made it work for you. Yeah. 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 And I, and I would never have charted the course that my life has taken. I mean, mm -hmm. not only did I not think I would be I didn't even think I'd be in, in the law. I just knew I would do something that I could study a lot and learn. And then the law seemed like a good fit for me. Mm -hmm. I loved law school. I will tell people, don't go to law school unless you're really prepared to just have it for the journey because a lot of it drives a lot of women out because of the nature of what it is, especially if you want to have kids and have balance. Mm -hmm. It's really tough to do, but there are ways to do it. And I found ways to do it that allowed me to have, you know, four kids be present in their lives, um, be that person that they could look up to, especially my daughters, because I had two boys and then nine year gap and then two girls and my girls are 16 and 18 now. And they say to me all the time that they admire that I'm able to do it all, that I can be really present for them and that I can also, you know, be provide. a badass mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. and provide and be a really stable source for them to really give them, you know, the security that they don't have to worry. Mm -hmm. They don't have to worry about it. They and know, that they know you've got it. They know I've got it. Mm -hmm. I know because you know teenagers have enough to worry about. Mm -hmm. And if they're worried about you, and as you know, they watched me go through the divorce. I think they knew, you know, that they that we would all be okay. Mm -hmm. And if you're open to it, I'd mm -hmm. love to talk about that a little mm -hmm. bit. I know you mentor women mm -hmm. that are going through divorce, and it's such a tough emotional and every situation is obviously very different but but you navigated it very well and I was blessed enough to be your friend during that time and watch you navigate it but you definitely had some struggles in it mm -hmm. and I think questioned yourself mm -hmm. and I think most women do so would you mind sharing a little bit about that sure yeah I mean it's it, it's one of the things now that I'm proudest of in my life that I've been able to because I didn't my parents um, were together, you know, 67 years. My ex-husband's parents were together until his dad died. 
I just didn't know divorce and I never thought it would happen to me. And I know a lot of people say that, but I just, I was super, super committed to my marriage and to be partnered with, you know, my husband through, you know, to be to old age. Mm -hmm. And life doesn't always go the way you expect it to. Mm -hmm. And um, I had just made the pivot into entrepreneurship when my marriage started to fail. Mm -hmm. And I was so grateful that I had not only a team of women that were super supportive um, and able to be there because, you know, working in a law firm or even in a company, you don't necessarily get to have that kind of emotional support. Right. You have to put on your game face. Yeah. And um, I didn't always have to do that. I had a lot of support. I had a lot of women who, you know, kind of lifted me up. I also knew that I had the ability to take a step back if I needed to. Mm -hmm. And that's what I love about, um, you know, having your own business is that you really get to do that. Mm -hmm. And um, so I think that, I think that helping other women to be able to have their own source of income is huge. And I think I have come across so many women in the last five years that were left with nothing and they put everything into their marriage like I did. And I never took more than a maternity leave off. I always felt the need to go back to work, even though I had, you know, my husband was making a lot of money. We could have, mm -hmm. I could have taken time off. It always felt to me like I needed to be my own person making my own income. Mm -hmm. And I never anticipating that I would be on my own or really need it. It mm -hmm. felt important. Mm -hmm. And so I really want to convey that to other women to really just never, you know, never let that go away because that's something that then you can turn and you can say that's mine mm -hmm. and I have it and it's for me and nobody can ever take that away from me because mm -hmm. the other is not always a guarantee right yeah and that's probably when you mentioned your girls knowing that sense of stability in you you knew you could provide for yourself absolutely and no matter what path they go down because one is pretty determined to be an actor mm -hmm. as my son is and the others determined to be a doctor. Mm -hmm. And they know that, you know, just because they want to do something, that doesn't mean it. But I would never in a million years discourage them because a lot of parents discourage their kids from the arts. Yeah. And it's, I've never done that because I know that they need to, that there's ways they can find mm -hmm. to be stable. I mean, yeah. You know, yeah, it's great to have a sure thing, but what's a sure thing anymore? Right. Yeah. You need Nothing. to love what you do. Nothing sure. Yeah. Nothing sure. Yeah. And and that whole saying, um, find something that you love and you'll never work a day. This actually came up in another podcast interview that I did. And I think it just now more than ever, it's so true because so there's so many things that we have thought, oh, absolutely stable 1000% and they're gone. They're gone. And you're like, wow. So, yeah. And yeah. that you can do a couple of things. I mean, I always thought my career would be one paycheck, one, you know, W2 form at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. And for the last, you know, seven years almost, it's been, multiple. you know, multiple, yeah. whether it's law, you yeah. know, my business, it's been your piece together. And you know what? There's a lot of, that's a, that's okay. Cause then you have a lot of belt and suspenders. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So wisdom, you know, you, you have a lot of wisdom. What am I not asking you that you think would be impactful to our listeners? Well, we've talked about a lot of it, all the things that I thought, oh, when she asked me that, I'll pull something out <laughs> magical. And I think it really is, I think the wisdom is love your kids passionately if you choose to have children. And we are in mom's, you know, a mom's making six figures broadcast. So most of the people listening to this, I expect will either be want to be moms yes. or moms. Love them passionately and let what you do be guided by how you can be the best mom you want to be. And I've heard other people talk about, you know, hiring someone to do the laundry or hiring someone to do. And there were times in my life where I did that. Mm -hmm. I remember even a counseling session with my ex-husband where we talked about, you know, who picks up the after the dog. And, right. and the therapist said, <laughs> you can just hire someone to do that. Right. And we were at a stage <laughs> in the game where that made a lot of sense, like right. to hire someone to do right. that. But I really wanted to be present with my kids. So for me to find a way to, you know, and now I think more than ever, you can work from home. You can work flexibly. Mm -hmm. You can piece things together. And then you can have the life that you want. And it doesn't always mean you're going to be perfect. And it doesn't mean you're going to be there to cook every meal for your kids. 
I mean, Perfection is a total illusion. It's a total illusion. It doesn't exist. <laughs> and I've never striven for perfection. Mostly I strive for, am I happy? Am I fulfilled? Mm -hmm. Are my kids happy and fulfilled? Mm -hmm. Are they putting some skin in the game? You know, my daughter's about to go off to college and she knows she's going to have to work. Yeah. Because, you know, you have if you have skin in the game, you're much, much more likely not only to be fulfilled, but also to be happier. Because so nobody get nobody who gets a free ride, it just doesn't work out very well. You mm -hmm. need to have some skin in the game. Yeah. So always, I guess that's what I would say. Always mm -hmm. make sure you and everybody that you love has some skin in the game. So book or podcast. Mm -hmm. And what would you recommend to our listeners? Yeah. Both for me, but I books these days. I think law school, I, I burnt out every last <laughs> part of me that reads for pleasure. <laughs> So I really will listen to books. And I loved, I know it's not, well, it is, I think, a little bit of um, of development. I loved Michelle Obama's Becoming. That, to me, was a journey that was just similar in some ways to mine and yet completely different. Mm -hmm. um, but I loved the experiences that she went through and how she, you know, kind of worked motherhood around career and mm -hmm. stepped back in her career to do something that was for her husband, which I thought was amazing. I also love um, The Happiness Lab which I love. It's um, a great just kind of working on ways to be, um, whether it's, you know, body image or yoga or meditation or other ways that you can really make it about joy and happiness. Yeah. I love Mel Robbins, The Five Second Rule. That's a book that I just listened to. And I love that because I love um, so much in our business is getting out of your head. And I'm in my head a lot. And That's I'm, just life. <laughs> I think it is. I think it is. Yeah. I feel like that. Like, yeah. <laughs> and don't think too long about it. Just five, four, three, two, yeah, one, go, go and do it. Yeah. And, and the I feelings will follow. Yeah. She's yeah. fantastic. She's, and she's, she's a badass. So I'm sorry. I shouldn't be saying badass no. so much, but I love that. I love that she's just real and honest. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Thank you for doing this with me. I appreciate you so much. Oh, I appreciate you too. You have made a profound impact in my life. So I'm very grateful for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast, please take a moment and leave a review on iTunes. To learn more about Moms Making Six Figures, head over to MomsMakingSixFigures.com. That's right, MomsMakingSixFigures.com.